Hi and welcome to Themeco. In this lesson, we will talk about the degrees of freedom of a mechanical system. There are different ways we could explain the concept of a system's degree of freedom. However, this time we will see from the point of view of the elements conforming to our system. Which elements, you ask? Well, mainly bodies and constraints. We will show you the procedure on how to estimate the number of degrees of freedom of any planar mechanical system you come across. By the end of the video, we expect you to have sufficient confidence to use it in your formulations. How should we start this topic? Let's see. We have seen until now a good number of definitions related to our course. We have talked, for instance, about moving bodies. You'll be surprised, but the only information we need to estimate the number of degrees of freedom is how many bodies we have and which constraints we are using. But I think we are forgetting something important. What is a degree of freedom? Imagine a planar body with no constraints. If I bring along an inertial system, we all intuitively understand that the body could translate along the x and y axis. Also, the body could rotate around an axis perpendicular to the plane. I can summarize this short explanation of imaginary movements and say that the body has three possibilities to move. Then this would be equivalent to saying that the body has three degrees of freedom. Why is knowing the number and type of degrees of freedom important to us? Well, imagine that if you wanted to precisely translate a body to a certain position and or, or rotate it in a certain number of degrees, you would need three physical force-like action. If you want to translate the body, you would need a linear force along the axis you want the body to be moved. And if you wanted to rotate the body so that it can be oriented as it is needed, you will need a torque or moment to make this happen. But let's not stay at this stage. A body with a full range of movement, although interesting, might not be functional as an engineering mechanism. We need to maybe have more than one body, and we would definitely need to join them together so that at the end we have a mechanism of interconnected bodies via joints of constraints. In conclusion, we will have a mechanism useful in performing an action. Now, because we are using constraints to join the different bodies to form a particular configuration, knowing the number and types of degrees of freedom of the mechanism might not be that easy to see. Every time we add a constraint, we restrict one or a few degrees of freedom. How can we know then the number and types of degrees of freedom left? You already know that someone took care of finding that one for us. The simple calculation goes like this. If I say that n is the number of bodies in the mechanism and nc is the number of total constraints imposed by the joints, the number of degrees of freedom of the mechanism will be degrees of freedom equals 3 times n minus nc. It is as simple as that. However, let me tell you something about this calculation. The total number of degrees of freedom is an integer number that could be negative, zero, or positive. Well, that was redundant. It would have been easier to say that the number of degrees of freedom belonged to a set of integer numbers. But the message here is that we can classify our mechanism in terms of the number of resultant degrees of freedom. If our system has a positive number of degrees of freedom larger than zero, we can say that we have a dynamically driven system. If it is zero, we say that the system is kinematically driven. And finally, if it is less than zero, we are in the presence of an over-constrained system. This brings forth an important set of definitions that will be explained in another lesson. Let's stick to how can we know or calculate the number of degrees of freedom of a mechanism. I believe we need an example. Let's take a crankshaft mechanism. This mechanism has three bodies. That's the value for our n. This means that our mechanism consists of 9 degrees of freedom due to the number of planar bodies. We can say that these are the number of generalized coordinates of our system. We also see three revolute joints and one translational joint. Each revolute joint constrains 2 degrees of freedom, two translations. And the translational joint also constrains 2 degrees of freedom, a translation and a rotation. This leaves us with 8 constraints. Now our resultant number of degrees of freedom of this system is 1, and it corresponds to the rotation of the crank around the point O. In this lesson, we reviewed the concept of a degree of freedom and the effect of a constraint on the total number of the system's or mechanism's number of degrees of freedom. We also saw how to estimate the number of degrees of freedom knowing only the number of bodies and the number and type of constraints. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.